गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू गुड इवनिंग सर सो दिस इज द सेशन 3 तो लाइव इंटरेक्शन सेशन 3 प्रीवियसली आई टुक फर्स्ट टू क्लासेस सो इन दिस सेशन आल्सो वी विल सॉल्व द प्रीवियस ईयर गेट क्वेश्चन सो इन द लास्ट क्लास सम ऑफ यू आस्क मी लाइक in the first class i have told about you the bod regarding the rate constant so i will explain it here like for bod at time t we write it like this l is equals to l not 1 minus 10 raised to power minus k dt if it is a base 10 if it is a base e we write it only k not kd l is equals to l not 1 minus to power 1 minus kt so so and the conversion factor to kd to k is kd is equals to k upon 2.303 which is equivalent to 0.434k i hope this is clear now uh likita i think you might have asked me right last time Okay, so now we will proceed with the. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. I asked that. Yeah. So I hope is it clear now? Yes, sir. So, so we will start with the first question. The first question asks about us. The hardness of water sample is measured directly by titration with 0.01 molar solution of. ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid using aerochrome black tea as an indicator the ebt react and form complexes with divalent metallic cation present in the water during the titration the edta replaces the ebt in the complex when the replacement of ebt is complete at the end of the titration the color of solution changes from so they have given the four options so we will first understand here the concept so as i mentioned hardness is nothing but the multi multivalent metallic cations we have discussed this in first class this is multi hardness is multivalent metallic cation so in hard, so basically ca2 plus mg2 plus are the major constituents major constituent while Al three plus, Sr three plus, Fe two plus, and Cu two plus are the minor constituents. Minor constituents. <coughs> so we know total hardness is equal to carbonate hardness plus non-carbonate hardness. So amount hardness. is basically therefore determined by the determination of the amount of calcium and the magnesium present in the water and amount of calcium and magnesium is determined by the titration with edta solution with edta solution so and in this method in this the water is titrated with it ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid using ebt as an indicator that is just mentioned in the question during titration the uh, the measured dt by titration with 0.01 molar solution of ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid using ebt as indicator so the ebt what happens so i will explain once again so the hardness is basically caused by the multivalent metallic cations the ca2 plus and mg2 plus are the major constituents al3 plus sr3 plus fe2 plus and cu2 plus are the minor constituents that cause hardness total hardness we write as carbonate hardness plus non carbonate hardness hardness is determined by the determination of amount of calcium and magnesium present in the water and of this amount is determined by titration with bersenet solution which is the edta method so in this what happens so in this the water is first titrated with ethylene ethylene diamine this ebt only type tetraacetic acid 
using EBT as the indicator. So the initially the EBT will form a complex. So area from black tree. In this area from black tree. Area from black tree plus Ca2 plus or these are metallic cations will react and they, they will form areochrome black t ca2 plus and mg2 plus the complex will form which will be in wine red color wine red color so areochrome black t complex so when this Areochrome black tree complex. Areochrome black tree. This is a complex Ca2 plus and Mg2 plus. In presence of EB, EDTA, this will now the EDTA will form the complex with calcium and magnesium. EDTA forming complex with magnesium and calcium. Free EBT been released. Now EBT is released. And this EBT will be in blue color. So basically, on adding EDTA, so if we read the question, during the titration, the EDTA replaces the EBT in the complex. When the replacement of EBT is complete at the end of the titration, the color of the solution changes from wine red to blue color, as I have mentioned in the uh, this one. So initially, it was wine red. On adding EBT, EDTA, EDTA will form a complex and EBT will be released and it will be a blue color. So basically from wine red to blue color it will form. So I hope first question is understood. Now we will proceed with the second question. The first question is clear. So now we will proceed with the question 33 of gate 2021. This question came in set 2. A water filtration unit is made of uniform size sand particles of 0.44 mm diameter with shape factor of 0.84 and specific gravity of 2.55. The depth of filter bed is 0.70 meter and the porosity is 0.35. The filter bed is to be expanded to a porosity of 0.65 by hydraulic backwash. If the terminal velocity of sand particles during backwash is 4.5 cm per second, the required backwash velocity is. Now, uh, the approach should be like, they have asked, uh, they have talked regarding the expanded bed. The filter bed is, uh, is to be expanded to a porosity 0.65 by hydraulic backwash. So, in this we know when it is expanded bed and porosity of expanded bed is equal to backwash velocity divided by terminal velocity. This is the expression 0.22. So here any uh, just So here this uh, this we denote as porosity of the expanded bed porosity of the expanded bed here Vt referred as terminal velocity of the particle terminal velocity of the particle Vb is referred as backwash velocity. So now let's read the question once more. So the wastewater filtration unit is made up of uniform size sand particle of 0.44 mm, 0.4 mm diameter. Shape factor is given, specific gravity is given, depth of the filter bed and porosity is also given. 
so they have asked us the required backwash velocity so based on this expression they are asking vb the porosity of the expanded bed has give they have given us 0.65 this is the porosity of the expanded bed so remember this equation nex is equals to vb by vt where uh, this denotes the porosity of the expanded bed vt denotes the terminal velocity of particle vb denotes the backwash velocity so moving so in question they have mentioned the uh, expanded bed porosity is 0.65 and the terminal velocity of the sand particle they have mentioned 4.5 cm per second so if we put this in the formula where they have given us the porosity as 0.65 0.65 is equals to vb terminal velocity they have given as 4.5 cm per second but the unit is cm per second so since the unit is 0 i will do it in a meter per second 4.5 into 10 raised to a power minus 2 0.22 so if you calculate this vb so vb will come out to be 6. Point so i will solve it so that it will be easy for you people to understand so 0.65 divided by 1 upon 0.22 is equals to vb upon 4.5 into 10 to the minus 2 now this will be in meter per second so uh, here 0.65 raised to power 1 upon 0.22 so now the vb will come out to be 6.35 into 10 raised to a minus 3 meter per second let's check the answer so answer is second option is it is clear do anyone has any doubt rakesh kumbala is it clear sir so so this is the second third question so the in this question if anyone wants me to explain it second time i will again explain it the uh, i will explain this one more time so in this question they have given the details about the filtration unit first they have given the 0.44 mm diameter shape factor specific gravity and also they have given the depth and the porosity moreover they have also given that the filter bed is to be expanded to a porosity of 0.65 by hydraulic backwash and they have given that the term if the terminal velocity of the sand particle during backwash is 4.5 cm the required backwash velocity is so you knowing the expression about the porosity of the expanded bed which is equals to vb upon vt raised to power 0.22 we can easily calculate this backwash velocity so they have already mentioned the expression for nex like a porosity for the expanded bed that is 0.65 velocity of terminal velocity of particle they have given is at 4.5 cm per second here i have converted into meter per second so after solving this expression we will get the value of vb which is this this is 6.35 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meter per second so coming to the third question in activated an activated sludge process is designed for secondary treatment of 7500 meter cube per day of municipal wastewater after the primary clarifier the ultimate bod of the effluent which enters into asp is 200 mg per liter the treated effluent after secondary clarifier is required to have an ultimate bod of 20 mg per liter mixed liquid volatile suspended solid concentration in the reactor and the 
underflow is maintained as 3000 mg per liter and 12000 mg per liter respectively the hydraulic retention time and mean cell residence time are 0.2 per day and 10 days respectively the a representative flow diagram of asp is shown below the underflow volume of the sludge wastage is so in this question they have asked us about the underflow sludge volume we will understand what is meant by underflow sludge volume so basically in the question they are mentioning like 7500 meter cube of waste water is coming this is the area this is the asp so we know in asp this is the aeration tank and this is the secondary sedimentation tank so q amount of this water is getting in as a influent so it will go to secondary the clarifier from secondary clarifier few will go uh, this will be effluent and some will be recycled and some will be wasted so here so i will draw this so basically so they are saying this is q not influent water which is going to the secondary sedimentation tank so q not is going to the secondary sedimentation tank this is q effluent so now a part of it will be recycled in the asp so this is we called as qr plus qw qw is a wasted amount and qr is a recycling amount and this will be and since qr is also coming so the effluent from the aeration tank will be q not plus qr and the final effluent of the system will be q not minus qw is it clear is this expression is clear to everyone is it clear if if you have any doubts tell now you can tell so yes, now yeah clear okay so now in the question they have mentioned as so in the question they have mentioned an activated sludge process is designed for the treatment of 7500 meter cube per day after the primary clarifier the ultimate bod of the effluent which enters into the asp is 200 mg so basically bod which is entering here is 200 mg per liter next sentence they are telling after the after the primary clarifier okay the treated effluent after secondary clarifier required to the ultimate bod of 20 mg per liter so treated means here after secondary is the here the effluent which is going here it should be 20 mg per liter that is effluent bod so i will denote it with the s not and sc final effluent now they are saying mixed liquid volatile suspended solid concentration in the reactor and the underflow is maintained as 3000 mg per liter and 12000 mg per liter so in the reactor so in the reactor so in this reactor they are maintaining 3000 mg per liter of mlbss concentration however at underflow it is 12000 at underflow it is 12000 mg per liter the hydraulic retention time and the mean cell residence time are 0.2 per day and 10 days 0.2 day and 10 days respectively a representative flow diagram of asp is shown below the underflow volume of sludge wasted is in fact they have given hrt as hydraulic retention time as 0.2 day 
0.2 day whereas mcrt means large residence time whereas mean cell residence time they have given us 10 days so in this we understood that the uh, uh, from the flow chart they have in telling influent bod is 200 mg per liter effluent bod is 20 mg per liter mlbss concentration in the aeration tank is 3000 mg per liter and underflow uh, in underflow the con mlbss concentration is 12000 mg per liter they are asking the underflow volume of sludge wasted is if they are asking us underflow volume of sludge wasted so basically we have to calculate qw plus qr this is they are asking us to calculate so beginning with this question we will begin so we will we will solve this we will begin by using hrt data so hrt is 0.2 per day we know hydraulic retention time is equals to volume by q volume by q q here is discharge flow rate basically q is flow rate so hrt is given as 0.2 per day volume we have to find out flow rate they are given as 7500 meter cube per day 7500 meter cube per day here also it is in given in day so volume comes out to be 0.2 into 7500 is equals to 1500 meter cube per day so now this is 1500 meter cube per day we know that the volume of aeration tank is 1500 meter cube per day this is the volume of aeration tank now using the data given of mcrt sludge age so here they have given the value as hrt 0.2 day and mean cell residence time is 10 days so mean we will first understand what is meant by mean cell residence time mean cell residence time mean cell residence time is mass of mlss in the aeration tank mass of mlss in the aeration tank ml vss mass of ml vss in the aeration tank divided by mass of ml vss leaving the system per day now mcrt so the expression of mcrt i will write it properly once uh, as it will create a confusion for you people so mean mean uh, mean cell residence time mean cell residence time mean cell residence time is given by mass of mlbss in the aeration tank upon mass of mlbss leaving the system per day mlbss mcrt is also known as sludge age we denote it by theta c sludge age so we define mean cell residence time as as it is defined as average time for which the biomass for which the biomass remains in the aeration tank average time for which the biomass remains in the aeration tank 
So this we call as mean sludge residue. Mean sludge residence time we call it as sludge. So the basic meaning of this is average time for which the biomass remains in the aeration tank. So now fit. Knowing the expression of mean sludge residence time is the mass of MLBSF in the MLBSF here means mixed liquid volatile suspended solid. MLBSF is mixed liquid volatile suspended solid. So now coming back to the formula, M mean cell residence time is equal to mass of MLBSF in the aeration tank upon mass of MLBSF leaving the system per day. So MCRT is equal to Mass of MLBSF in the aeration tank. To know the total mass of MLBSF in the aeration tank is nothing but the V into X. V is the volume of the aeration tank. X is the MLBSF concentration in the aeration tank. So total mass in the aeration tank will MLBSF concentration in the aeration tank will be V into X divided by mass of MLBSF leaving the system per day. So from here it is visible that the system from the entire system this is getting uh, leaving the system and this much amount is leaving the system so considering this as one system so this is leaving the system q1 not minus qw and qw xu so here the expression will be q0 minus qw xe plus qw xu here V is the volume of aeration tank, X is the mass of MLBSS concentration in the aeration tank. Q0 minus QW is the flow, outflow from the system. QA is the effluent, MLBSS concentration in the effluent. QW is the uh, amount of wasted sludge. And QA is the MLBSS concentration of the wasted sludge. So, here it is, I have shown, so Q minus Q0 minus QW which is going out, here the MLBSF concentration will be Xe denoted by Xe, here the uh, wasted sludge concentration, uh, MLBSF concentration is Xu and the one which is returning to this, this is QR, recy recycled sludge, fluoride. So knowing this, so we the volume of the aeration tank we just now calculated as 1500 meter cube now this is 1500 meter cube multiplied by x here is given as x they have specified as in the reactor the mixed liquid volatile suspended solid in the reactor is 3000 milligram per liter and the underflow is maintained as 12000 milligram per liter respectively so 1500 into 3000. Now Q0 minus QW XC plus QW XU. Now the knowing since the MLBSS concentration at the wasted sludge and the MLBSS concentration addition will be too high, we can neglect the effluent. MLBSF concentration. If we neglect this neglecting, so therefore 0, so the expression will turn out to be 1500 into 300,000 divided by QW XU. So 1500 into 3000. So amount QW we have to calculate and XU they have already mentioned as 12,000. So as per now the expression of our is MCRT is equals to 1500 into 3000 QW into 12,000. MCRT in question they have given as 10 days. So putting here 10, keeping 10 there, 15 into 3000 3, divided by QW 
into 12,000. So QW will comes out to be 37.5 meter cube per day. Till, till here, is it clear? If anyone of you has any doubt, you can ask. Is it clear? You can type the message here, it's clear. Okay, I will move forward then. So QW. Now, but they have asked us about the underflow volume. Now, but the question in question, they have asked us about the underflow volume. And underflow here is QW plus QR. QR we found. Now we have to find the QR. How to find the QR? Now? If we write a, if we balance the equation around aeration tank. So this was our aeration tank. This was our aeration tank. If we balance the equation of inflow outflow, so what we will write? So I will just paste this figure in that page. Just a second. So, from this it will be clear, the next equation which I will write is, if we write a balancing equation around the aeration tank, mass flow rate, Q0 into X, I told X is the concentration at the influent, ML, uh, X0, X0 is the MLBSS concentration of the inflow, plus Q0 X0 plus QR XU is equals to inflow is equals to outflow, Q0 plus QR. X. So if we write it in one Q naught X naught plus Q R X U is equals to Q naught plus Q R into X. So Q naught is basically this one biomass flow rate in the in aeration tank Q naught into X. So again another we cycle this Q R into X U. The amount which is going Q naught plus Q R into the X, which is the by MLBSS concentration aeration tank that will be the same concentration because it will be going as an effluent. Now re we neglecting X naught because the biomass concentration will be negligible at the inflow so we are neglecting and assuming so neglecting X naught so this Q naught and X naught therefore we have to neglect Neglecting. So now the equation remains QR XU is equal to QR plus Q naught by X. So final equation is QR XU is equal to Q naught plus QR into x. If I rearrange this equation, I will get this kind of qr by q0 is equal to x upon x, x upon x u minus x. So, this is the MLBSS concentration the aeration tank and this is the MLBSS concentration at the base state sludge. So, from here we can find the qr. <coughs> so, qr will be so, just going back to the question, Q0 given as 7500 meter cube per day. So, Q0 is 7500 meter cube per day, X given as 3000, XU is given as 12000 I think. This is 12000 milligram per liter.
so this is given as 12000 mg per liter <coughs> so this is 12000 minus 3000 solving this you will get the flow rate to be 3000 into 7500 divided by 9000 so if you solve this you will get value of 2500 meter cube per day <coughs> so our underflow rate will be qr plus qw which is equals to 2500 plus qw value came out to be 37.5 meter cube per day so the final value will be 2537.5 meter cube per day so answer will be 3.75 2537.5 meter cube per day will be the answer so this will be the answer of underflow this based on the question they have asked us about the underflow volume so that will be our answer 2537.5 meter cube per day is it clear? Do anyone have any doubt? Is it clear to everyone? Or shall I repeat it once? You can write, you can message if you want me to repeat this one. Okay. <coughs> so, moving to the last question. <coughs> hmm. A grid chamber of a grid chamber of rectangular cross section is to be designed to remove the particles with diameter of 0.25 mm just hold for Clear sir, but it took some time. Can we shorten the solution? Yes, you can shorten the solution. Since I have to explain you the concept, you can directly remember this formula, this one, and the question is very direct. You just have to remember, know the uh, what is HRT, what is SRT. So I can solve this in a shorter way also, but many other people won't be able to understand it. So I have to involve every, uh, explain every concept before arriving to any formula. So else you, for shorter, you can just remember the formula of HRT, the MCRT, and directly you can apply this formula. So you will get the result within two to one to two minutes. I hope it's clear, Mayuri Prasad. A grid chamber of rectangular cross section is to be designed to remove particles with diameter of 0.25 mm and specific gravity of 2.70. The terminal velocity of particle is estimated as 2.5 cm per second. The chamber is having a width of 0.5 meter and has, has to carry a peak wastewater flow of 9720 meter cube per day, giving the depth of flow as so what are the values they have given they have given the diameter of 0.25 mm of the so particle your mic is off okay okay sorry so the a question i will again read to. a grid chamber of rectangular cross section is to be designed to remove particles with diameter of 0.25 mm and specific gravity of 2.70 the terminal velocity of the particle is estimated to be 2.5 cm per second the chamber is having a width of 0.5 meter and has to carry a peak wastewater flow of 
9720 meter cube per day given the depth of flow as 0.7 meter 75 meter if a flow through velocity of 0.3 meter per second has to be maintained using the proportional wear at the outlet end of the chamber the minimum length of the chamber to remove 0.25 mm particles completely is so what are the data they have given they have given the diameter of the particle settling velocity terminal settling velocity they have given vf is equals to 2.5 cm per second the chamber is having a width of 0.5 m width b they have given as 0.5 m and has to carry a peak wastewater flow q they have given as 9720 2 meter cube per day depth of the flow they have given the h also h value is 0.75 and flow through velocity is vf vf they have given as 0.3 meter per second using the proportion will not do that the minimum length of the chamber to remove the 0.25 mm particles completely will be so we know the settling velocity in the last class i have explained you about the flow velocity settling velocity overflow velocity here the settling velocity formula there we have mentioned q upon bn <coughs> here settling velocity they have given as 2.5 cm per second 2.5 cm per second is equal to q discharge flow rate they have given as 9720 meter cube 9720 meter cube per day per day they have given breadth they have given as 0.5 meter so they are asking the length 0.5 into l so they have asking the length so it is in centimeter per second so if we convert it into meter per second so it will be into for second to convert into day it will be 86400 divided by for centimeter to convert into meter 100 so it will be now meter per second is equals to 9720 into 0.5 into l so if you calculate l 2.5 into 86400 oh just so if you now have to calculate the l l l will be 9720 into 100 divided by 2.5 into 86400 into 0.5 if you calculate this value will come out to be 9 meter 9 meter so i hope this is clear so if anyone so this is for today if anyone has any question i will be here till 7 o'clock if anyone of you has any doubts or any question you can ask me If anyone wants me to repeat the previous question, I can do that. Also. Yeah, thank you. So. so in first question we talked about our hardness related question i have explained the concept so i will be here till 7 if anyone has any doubt you can leave us else you can leave as well
Sen güzel. Ya yeah, thank. If you don't have any question, then please I request you to please leave the session. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, my name is Mr. Last question is the value of eight six four double zero. How do you get? What? Last question. Last question. Yes. Eight six four double zero hello. Yes. Eight six four. If we convert seconds into hours, oh, seconds into, into days, seconds into days. This is meter per day. So if you convert, yes, I, I one day is equal to twenty four. Huh? Yes, yes. Sir. <coughs> yeah. I will you, explain. Uh, you write the meter per second, not you uh, write the meter per day. That's that is meter per day. Okay. So I will tell this. One day is equal to 24 hours. For 24 hours into 60 minutes to 60 seconds. If you do this, you will get a one day is equal to 864400 seconds. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Can you review the uh, whole session? I will get the session. Yes. What? Can you review the whole session? The question you uh, yeah. today you discuss. Okay. So beginning with first discuss with the hardness question. So <clears throat> so in this hardness they have basically asked what will be the end point of the titration. So in this question we talk like initially what is hardness. the major constituents these are major constituents these are minor constituents so in titration what happens initially when you add with aerochrome black tea initially aerochrome black tea will form metal complex with the ca2 plus and mg2 plus after adding edta the edta will form the metal complex and ebt will be released as blue color it will be a bind red when aerochrome black tea will form metal complex it will be a bind red later stage it form blue color so answer will be bind red to blue color okay this was the first question second question we talk about the filtration where they have given us about the expanded porosity so they have mentioned about the details about the filtration bed expanded filter bed so and they have asked the what is the backwash velocity the question from here knowing the expression of nex is equal to vb by vt Rest was 0.22. We can easily solve the this VB, and this value is given. Terminal well, uh, this terminal velocity of sand particles also given. So only backwards velocity using this expression we can easily calculate. So this was our second question. Coming to the third question. So in the third question, after giving the entire details about the ASP, they have asked us about the underflow volume. Underflow volume of the sludge waste. Here they have measured the underflow. Underflow here basically means Q R plus Q W, and they have given the details with the mean sea level change and H R T. So mainly I have used the given data from H R T. I calculated the volume from volume using the volume in uh, this formula M C R T. I calculated the Q W. Q W one component I found of underflow rate, underflow wastage. Then after doing the this mass balance of the aeration tank i calculated formed an expression of qr this was the expression qr from qr from this expression i calculated the qr so after that i reached qr plus qw which is the underflow wastage so there were underflow volume of sludge wastage so for that qr plus qw is needed after adding both the thing we got this as the final answer In the last question, I talked about the grid chamber of rectangular section. In that, they are basically asking the minimum length. In the previous uh, class, I explained what is length, what is breadth, what is settling velocity, what is overflow velocity, what is flow velocity. So, in previous 
class we uh, we have seen this expression bs is equals to q upon bm settling velocity is given in the question flow rate is also given breadth is given we have to calculate the l so simply applying all the data in the uh, formula we got the value of l which is 9 meter man manabendra ghosh i think it is clear right yes sir please anyone else have any other doubt thank you sir yeah well If you have no doubt, I request you to please read the question. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Bhargav Katta, you have any doubt? Nagala, Vidya Sagar, Nikita. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 